Welcome to the Change Your POV Podcast. You're listening to Headspace and Timing, a show dedicated to breaking down the stereotypes of veteran mental health. I'm your host, Dwayne France. Let's get ready to make sure that your headspace and timing is set correctly. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Headspace and Timing. If this is your first time listening, then thanks for checking us out. As many of you who serve know, the M2 machine gun, the 50 cal, is one of the greatest weapons in the military's arsenal. The weapon's headspace and timing isn't set right, however, it's just a huge chunk of metal. Veterans can be rendered inoperable if their headspace and timing is not set correctly either. That's my mission here, to raise awareness about veteran mental health and reduce the stigma against seeking support. Each week we'll talk about different aspects of veteran mental health and interview mental health professionals that are working with veterans, service members, and their families around the country. Everybody, welcome back to Headspace and Timing, a blog, podcast, and ebook designed to change the way that you think about veteran mental health. My name is Dwayne France, and I appreciate you taking the time to listen to this podcast and all the shows on the Change Your POV podcast network. So, you know, the time around New Year is a time to reflect on the past and look forward to the future. A lot of veterans uh, focus a lot on the past, me included, uh, our past service, glory years, and all that. Eddie and Bennett, the uh, the flagship hosts of the Change Your POV podcast network, uh, did a, a look back to look forward episode. This is actually the second one. They did one in 2016, and of course, they just released one uh, for 2017, looking forward in 2018. You can find that by going to changeyourpov.com on your podcast player of choice, uh, looking for episode 201. I'm going to link to that in the show notes. Uh, in that episode, uh, they shared their favorite uh, episodes. Uh, I appreciate uh, the discussion that they had that uh, one of them was uh, was mine. Um, actually, one of my favorite episodes as well, the, uh, the Theater of War episode with Brian Dorries. So I'm going to do something similar today, uh, although not choose my favorite Headspace and Timing episodes. Um, I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, looking back, looking back to 2017. A uh, little bit of uh, looking forward and, and sharing with you a, a blog post that I wrote uh, that kind of is uh, pertinent to some of this. So what I want to do is kind of look back on uh, 2017 um, in in three different ways. Uh, things happened that weren't all that great, you know, that uh, weren't positive, um, especially for me. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get into a commentary on, of course, uh, uh, politics or or religion or anything like that, uh, but uh, but want to talk about things that, you know, me personally, um, as uh, as many of you who may be uh, readers of the Headspace and Timing blog know, um, and uh, and definitely those who I'm connected with on social media kind of are aware of that uh, I lost my father uh, this past year, uh, June of this past year, uh, my father, uh, also named Dwayne. Uh, also a combat veteran. He was a, a Vietnam veteran, served in uh, 68, 69. Uh, he, ha- he passed away at the age of 69. And so um, it was a challenge, of course, um, for us uh, as a family, uh, for me personally. It's one of those things that uh, I don't often talk about, but one of the main reasons, um, one of the various reasons that I got into mental health counseling is because you know, I saw what happened. I saw what uh, what Vietnam did to my father and his brothers uh, and their generation. Uh, and I didn't want that to happen for, for me personally, of course, uh, or for the veterans in my generation. Uh, you know, I became a therapist so, uh, uh, so that I could help veterans uh, not go through that. And because I couldn't be my father's therapist, right? You know, I mean, that's, uh, it's one of those things that we need to make sure to, uh, to look at some self-introspection where we got to where we got know where we are and uh and my father was a big influence for me in uh in looking at uh mental health um and becoming a mental health professional uh another couple things that didn't work out quite as planned um for 2017 was the fact that uh uh, tried to enter into a couple of partnerships with some local maybe some national organizations uh to help spread the word and help provide mental health counseling to veterans uh, and they really didn't work out. 
Um, I'm not going to uh, talk about who those partnerships were, um, and I'll get into why in a little bit. Um, but, uh, but, you know, three or four pretty big failures, um, that, that I planned on, um, uh, making, a uh, joining forces and making a good connection and, and, and kind of, uh, moving things forward that just didn't work out. Um, no animosity, no, no negative stuff. It just, it just didn't work for whatever reason, you know, so, uh, that, uh, that kind of bummed me out. It really did, um, you know, kind of. Um, mess with me a bit and there was a series of frustration you know how how much uh, more work could we do uh, if we partnered together versus uh, um, working separately you know I kind of tell people you know if we're all pulling on oars at the same time we get there a lot faster uh, than trying to to row the boat in our own pace and our own distance but hey you know that's uh, that's what happens couple things happened uh, that, that are sort of neutral. You know, looking back um, at 2017, there was there was a neutrality to it um, that uh, maybe, I mean, there were some good parts to this and some bad parts to this. Um, and one of the things was uh, I finished my master's in business administration, and I laugh because everybody's like, uh, well, good, you know, you finish your master's. Um, and, and for me, it was a, a second master's degree and I'm not, hey, this isn't about bragging. This isn't about me, you know, you know, patting myself on the back. This is, this is trying to tell people, you know, the real deal. Um, yes, I finished my master's in business administration. Uh, I chose after finishing my, uh, master's in clinical mental health counseling to go back for a second master's because I had the GI bill, right? And you want to, you don't want to leave money on the table. You want to, you know, continue to advance. Um, but for my MBA, um, for me, it was brutal. Like, uh, it was, it was seriously brutal to finish it up. Uh, in order to complete the, uh, the program before my GI bill ran out, I had to carry a three, three class load over the summer, uh, which of course is a shortened semester. Um, many people are aware of that. Uh, and I was still catching up from, uh, the passing of my father in June. And so, uh, my, my father passed away sort of two weeks, I think into the semester, uh, and so things happened that I was, uh, I was pretty much three weeks behind. Um, and, and I almost gave it up. I almost said, you know what, forget this. Um, I, I was launching the podcast, uh, about that time I was doing so many different things, um, that, uh, and I didn't really need it. You know, that's what I was telling myself. Uh, you know, I didn't need this, um, this MBA, uh, and I, I didn't need to, you know, go through all this. I mean, it was, it was a lot of stress. Um, and, and ultimately I had to lock myself in my office, uh, here at the house for, uh, uh, probably a week and a half straight just to catch everything up. And, um, and, and I'm glad that I did it, but, uh, it was, it was pretty brutal. Um, another thing that, that is, uh, you know, maybe has both, uh, positive and negatives, uh, is, uh, you know, again, as many of you might know, um, I run a nonprofit that provides mental health care to veterans who have no other means of support. Um, and so, uh, in addition to my work as a clinician, uh, I'm the executive director of the Colorado Veterans Health and Wellness Agency, and we provide uh, outpatient mental health counseling to veterans who may have different obstacles. You know, they can't pay or they don't have resources, uh, they don't have insurance. Um, and so, uh, we provide counseling from mental health professionals who understand veteran mental health um, to those, uh, those veterans. In our first 18 months, we started in June of 2016, uh, we've helped over 100 veterans access mental health counseling that otherwise wouldn't have gotten the help they needed. You know, of course, um, you know, uh, everybody's like, well, that's great, right? You know, that's, that's 100 veterans. Uh, but, uh, but it's neutral because I know that we could have helped so many more. Uh, but getting the word out about these services, I mean, it was, it's been a heck of a lot harder than I thought it would be uh, here in my hometown of Colorado Springs and in the Pikes Peak region. Um, and, and then helping veterans understand that, that look, this is beneficial, right? You know, that's, um, that's challenging to be able to get that out. And so even though, uh, yeah, it's great in the first 18 months we served a hundred veterans, I just, there's, there's some frustration because I know that there's so many more veterans out there that could use this service. Uh, and there's, uh, there's so much more capacity that I have and my team has to be able to provide these services. So that's really a glass half full kind of thing. Uh, another neutral sort of uh, came with a good or bad or you know up or down is uh, 
I got my license as a mental health professional. Um, you know, listeners uh, who may not be familiar with this, that may not seem like a big deal, but it, it's kind of going, it's like going from getting your learner's permit to being allowed to drive by yourself only, you know, um, ethically and legally as a therapist, it's, it's a lot bigger than that. Um, for, for someone to get licensed as a mental health professional, not only do you have to have the master's degree in, in some mental health counseling discipline, um, there's over two years after that, that you have to work, uh, over 2000 hours of, of, uh, working with veterans and their families all under supervision. And so being a licensed mental health professional, um, means that I'm able to practice independently of supervision, uh, which is, uh, which is neat. Uh, and, and, and it is a big thing. I'm not gonna, you know, I, I had a thrill when I finally got my license. Um, but then I just kind of continued doing what I was doing before. It just kind of continued to flow. And, and, and that's a beneficial thing. You know, I had a, a great job and continue to have a great job. And, and I just kind of, um, continued doing the services that I was already doing. But I look back and this is sort of like how I, uh, I always was, uh, when it came to reenlistments in the army, you know, that was my big things like, Hey, you know, let's not just do a big ceremony. Let's just, you know, raise the right hand and, and then go back to work. Um, and, and so again, for me, it was, you know, um, yes, uh, it was a great thing. Um, and it was just, you know, sort of more of the same, uh, <clears throat> then looking at, some of the positive things and, and arguably, yes, those last three can be positive and I'll get into that in here in a minute. Um, but, uh, but some, some truly positive things that are, are pretty neat, uh, that happened this past year. Uh, and this is one of them, you know, podcasting is new to me. It's probably new to you. Uh, not many people know how to go to Stitcher or iTunes or iHeartRadio to listen to podcasts. Uh, and we, you know, here at the Change Your POV Podcast Network, we're trying to bring it to you in as many ways as possible. You can find the podcast on ChangeYourPOV.com, VeteranMentalHealth.com, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, as much as we can possibly get it out. Uh, this is uh, this has really been a, a pretty neat experience, and and I've enjoyed it um, probably as much or even more than I, I thought I would. It gives me uh, a great reason to have some excellent conversations with others in my uh, my industry, um, and, and try to bring veteran mental health out to, to, to the rest of the community. Um, and so, uh, this has been really fun. There's not a lot of mental health podcasts out there, uh, and even few from licensed mental health professionals who are combat veterans. Uh, so I really want to thank Eddie and Bennett again, uh, for having me along for the ride. Uh, and I also want to show a Appreciation to my fellow co-hosts Jeff Adamek, Andrew McDowell, Kevin Fairbanks uh, for joining us on this this ride. Um, there's there's not a lot of other podcasts um, that are doing what we're doing. I, I don't know of any actually. Um, and, and so coming along and 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 I guess uh, setting this up and and being invited to uh, participate has been a, a pretty neat thing. You know, the other, uh, another thing that happened great in uh, 2017 is a Headspace and Timing blog. Um, it, it was a huge positive from the last year. And 2017 was my full, first full year of operation. Um, and, uh, and we had nearly 40,000 page views, um, which is uh, pretty neat. You know, it may not seem like a lot compared to huge sites like Task and Purpose that get like three times that in a day. Um, but for a one-man show... Uh, that's pretty good. And for one that's focused on a topic, veteran mental health, that's not all that popular to begin with, I'd say that's even better than pretty good. Uh, that's nearly 40,000 veterans, their families, and those that support them that read something or listened to something or saw something that might have changed your life. And so I appreciate the um, uh, the participation. I appreciate the readership. I appreciate everybody who took the time to go, uh, check out the headspace and timing blog. Uh, and, uh, and even that just seeing those numbers have, have encouraged me to continue to move forward and, uh, and keep doing this. So that brings me to the point that I was going to make today. You know, it's, uh, um, uh, long story longer as, uh, Christopher Lockhead would say, um, but I wanted to share with you a blog post I wrote about this time last year, uh, and it's called uh, uh, How to Completely Change How You See the World. I'm going to make sure that the, the link to that is in the show notes, um, but uh, this, is, this is something that as I was considering uh, 2017 that, uh, that I was looking at. 
you know, uh, one of the keys to, to mental health and wellness is changing how you see the world by focusing on the positive while forcing yourself to pay less attention to the negative. You know, uh, a lot of people can say, oh, this is a pie in the sky, Pollyanna, look on the bright side, making lemons out of lemonade. Um, but it's more than that. It's making a habit of paying more attention to positive things and not allowing negative things to overwhelm you or even creep in. So consider a painting, right? You know, it, it's a very well done painting. You probably see it in a museum, you know, uh, maybe not Monet because I'm not a fan of impressionism, but uh, maybe you are. So maybe your painting's a Monet. You know, your painting's hanging there on the wall and it's lit by two lights suspended from the ceiling. Um, the two lights, one is a black light, one is a soft white light, and they're controlled by a single dimmer switch. Uh, when the switch is all the way down, the black light is at full strength. Uh, when the switch is all the way up, the white light is at full strength. The painting is going to look very different depending on which light is shining on it. You control the switch. I control the switch for my painting. The painting is our environment. Um, the environment is neither good or bad because reality resists judgment. Reality is not right or wrong, positive or negative. It just is. Uh, it's our point of view that covers the reality. Uh, there are some things that exist or that have, that have existed that a majority, almost an entirety of a population considers wrong. Uh, genocide, of course, um, or the heroin or suicide, opiate epidemics that exist. Uh, the truth is that however widespread the agreement is, the wrongness of these things is still a collective judgment. Uh, there are a wide number of topics that rightness or wrongness is not agreed upon. Uh, when I wrote this, I said 2016 was a perfect example of just about all of that. And you can make the argument that 2017 uh, is the same. Um, you know, not everybody <laughs> agrees that things are right or wrong. And, and people solidify in their position so much. Um, then there are things, uh, universal things, that people find right or pleasurable. Uh, the smell of a new car, the joy and the laughter of a happy baby. Again, all of these things are judgments. They're not reality, um, whether we agree on them as a whole or not. So back to the painting, right? You can choose to light your painting with the black light, the negative point of view, or with the white light, the positive point of view. You, I, we have the power to change the light from dark to bright unless we think we don't have that power. Our mind, and more specifically our brain, is how we perceive, analyze, and interpret our environment. And our pattern of positive and negative thoughts are the filters through which we make that interpretation. Some people are naturally positive, uh, naturally optimistic. Others are more like that, uh, that well-known phrase. Uh, some are born pessimists, some are made pessimists, and others have pessimism thrust upon them. Uh, however, at different points in our lives, uh, we're reminded of positives while experiencing the negatives. As we're involved in something we care about, uh, when we start to question ourselves, you know, what if I'm doing, what if I'm doing this wrong, right? You know, uh, this podcasting thing. What if I'm doing this wrong? This uh, blogging thing. What if I'm doing this wrong? You know, doubt starts to creep in, and if we keep the negative light on it, it's quite possible that I'd get stuck in that mindset. I might stop doing it. I might quit. Uh, and I might be wrong for quitting. I might be wrong for stopping. Um, just when I was in uh, uh, those questioning places, though, um, I received a reminder of the white light. Um, and and it's, it's sort of like we were talking about before about the, the headspace and timing views that uh, someone... Someone reaches out and says, hey, you know, I, I hear you. Um, yes, uh, when it came to them and their situation, I did make a difference. I am making a difference. Um, and, and hearing that, being reminded of that positive light can make all the difference in the world. Our viewpoint in the world is the one thing we can control. We can choose to focus on the negative and we can experience negative, or we can choose to focus on positive and experience positive. Our lives can be a whole bunch of good with a few small spots of bad or a whole bunch of bad with a few small spots of good, which sounds more pleasing, more easy, more fulfilling. I personally would, uh, would rather have the whole bunch of good. You have a choice. I have a choice. We have a choice. We could choose the left-hand road. Uh, we can use the right-hand road, the positive outlook or the negative. Uh, choosing is not the challenge, though. Realizing that you have the ability to choose and truly believing you have control that's the tricky part. 
So that's the the blog post uh, that uh, that I wanted to share with you today, um, and and you can check that out again by going to veteranmentalhealth.com and um, you know, looking up how to completely change how you see the world. Again, uh, that's going to be linked in the show notes. Um, but I thought about that post uh, over the past couple days. Uh, how do I change light on the negative stuff? My dad passing away. Yes, um, you know, horrible. It was hard. Um, and it's hard to, to look at it, that in a positive light, but it's also possible. I uh, and my family, uh, my brother and sister, uh, those that, that loved my father, uh, you know, I know that uh, in some of the discussions, I know personally I've gotten to a place of peace about it, uh, and, uh, and, and so have they uh, somewhat. Uh, more importantly, to my point of view, is uh, my father found peace in the final years of his life. Uh, he was finally out from underneath the cloud that that had covered him for 30 years, uh, and he was enjoying his life. Um, he was living la vida loca, as my sister says. Um, you know, I can only hope that when I'm 69 years old, I'm going to be out hiking looking for dinosaur tracks. Uh, my father passed away doing what he loved, um, and, and he was an adventurous man, and, and he was living a life of adventure. Um, and so uh, even though that was a very significantly difficult point in this past year, I look back and, and I can choose to look at it from the positive light uh, rather than the negative light. And uh, in the partnerships I mentioned, you know, the, the uh, between my agency and other agencies, they, they didn't work out professionally, but I still talk with the people involved in those partnerships to this day. Um, it's, it's a, it's, it, you know, networking thing, not this networking thing where we're we're talking about, uh, you know, what's in it for me and how can I get this next job? But, but really we're all people working in the same space and, uh, it, which is why I'm not in, in, and I wouldn't call them out, but I'm not calling them out. I'm not, you know, it, it just, it didn't work out. Um, I thought that it would, I, I was certain that it could, um, but it just, it didn't happen that way. You know, so uh, so that's something to look at is uh, and, and those partnerships maybe didn't bear fruit in 2017, but there's nothing to say that we're not going to be uh, working together in the future. Um, and and if I were to look at things in a negative light and burn those bridges and and cut those ties, um, then that closes the door on future collaboration. Um, so uh, so that's something, again, the way that I look at that, the negative um, it, it's going to make a big difference. Uh, instead, if I choose to look at it in a positive light and uh, and and kind of think that uh, that it's it's better uh, versus thinking that it's worse, you know. Of course, uh, the neutral stuff is easier to manage with the positive light. You know, that's sort of where the switch is in the middle. Um, that it doesn't take much effort to nudge it up to the positive. You know, I, I finished my MBA. Uh, that was the capstone to 10 years of college. It started off with an associate's degree that I had no clue where I was going. Um, but uh, the fall of 20, uh, 2007 to the fall of 2017, uh, my kids were in grade school uh, when I started my college journey. And, and, uh, and I ended up um, over 10 years later, you know, my, my daughter's about to, to graduate high school. So you know, yes, I look back and I can, I can reduce those negative thoughts, the, the negative thoughts, even that I shared earlier in this, uh, this podcast, you know, I can say, you know what, um, it doesn't matter how hard it was at the end. Um, and, and for those of you going through college, uh, veterans, if you're listening, uh, or anybody, if you happen to be doing this in my experience, that's really kind of the way it was in each of my degrees. Uh, my bachelor's degree, I was burnt out at the end of it. My first master's degree, I was just almost dialing it in uh, there at the end. I just in in, in talking with um, my professors and talking with with other uh, students, it's it's really kind of all that way. And so, not only did I have sort of the burnout uh, and the stress, um, it was just it was ten years of of college. Um, and it was, it was natural to kind of feel the way that I felt and I pushed through it. Um, and, and I, I look back and there was actually a, a very clear time where I, I very seriously decided, um, that I was going to continue and make the effort to push through and finish, uh, versus, um, literally just stop, um, and, and, you know, maybe not even finish my MBA. You know, so uh, looking at things that, that have both positive and negative aspects, I can push that positive light up. And of course, um, 
you know, absolutely the hundred veterans that we have served so far uh, with my program. I, I absolutely love it. That's, um, that's some direct tangible results uh, that, that we have had that, that make me know, you know what, this is, this is good. You know, a, a friend of mine uh, recently reminded me of the parable of the starfish. You know, a little boy um, or the old man, depending on who's telling the story, uh, saving one starfish on a, uh, uh, on a beach of starfish and, and saying, you know, at least I saved this one. Um, you know, and so, again, pretty easy to say, you know what, let, let me, you know, um, tune down or, or tune out or, or get rid of the negative thoughts and, and focus on the positive. And it is. Um, and, and I have definitely known of veterans who have expressed to me that the, the support that they've gotten through this program has made a lot of difference. And will continue to do so. And of course, again, the, the licensure is a great thing. It, it helps me um, continue doing what I'm doing, uh, supporting veterans um, in an individual way. Uh, and, and, it, you know, and it doesn't need to open doors because doors were already open for me. And I had a lot of support from, from the people uh, that I work with and work for uh, in my agency here in Colorado Springs. So that's uh, just a, a way to look at uh, maybe my experience in the past 2017. And, and, you know, going back to the metaphor I was used, 2017 was the painting on the wall. The events happened as they happened. Um, but I can choose to, to have the dimmer switch all the way down uh, and look at it in a negative light and, and look at it in a, um, a sort of a depressed situation. Uh, or I can uh, do what uh, what I'm planning on doing, and what I'm doing here is is cranking up the white light and saying, you know what, um, as difficult as it was, as hard as it was, um, there were some good things that came out of it, even out of the bad. And you know, the the post traumatic growth or the post stress growth, uh, I'm going to choose the uh, the upper path, and I'm not going to choose the lower path and and to, and to decline. Uh, so looking forward. I'm stoked to see what 2018 is going to bring to the Change Your POV Podcast Network. Uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, Jeff Adamak's series, uh, Lessons in Leadership from the Band of Brothers. Um, I recorded an episode with him uh, a little bit ago uh, that our episode was over an hour and a half, and we actually talked for nearly two hours, Jeff and I, uh, as, as, as we often do, as, as people often do when they care about the same things and, and, uh, and, and think similarly about things. Uh, but uh, we talked even longer than the episode that we were discussing. Um, and so looking at that and looking at some of the things that uh, that, that we have prepared for you in 2018, uh, that it's going to be great. Uh, for my show, uh, I see some great guests coming up. You know, I've been surprised at the response from my colleagues in the mental health community, and I'm lining up some great guests to talk about veteran mental health, just the opportunity to, to spread the word um, you know, I want to make talking about veteran mental health as common as talking about the weather. Hey, how you feeling today? Yeah, kind of crappy. Yeah, anything I can do? Yeah, you know, maybe we can sit and talk. Or no, I'm I'm doing all right. You know, but at least it's something that we're talking about. Uh, I'm going to be doing something a little different too. The first episode of every month is going to be me talking about a blog post in the Headspace and Timing blog. Tried that a little bit last year, but I had so many um, guests to respond that uh, that the guest shows kind of took over these uh, these kind of personal hosted shows. Uh, but it's going to be a little bit like this one was today. Um, I may be joined by a reader who wants to talk about a particular post that helped them understand something different or move them in some way. You know, if you want to get in on that, head over to VeteranMentalHealth.com and, and drop me a line through the contact page. Uh, there's some other things in the work, uh, in the works, as you might know, I just got done with a 13 part series, veteran mental health Boot Camp. It's over 12 hours of content and we just kind of scratched the surface. We just started, um, uh, looking at, at things, uh, maybe not from a hundred thousand foot view, but, uh, but from a 50,000 square foot, right? Uh, it was looking at veteran mental health from a bunch of different perspectives. Uh, we're actually going to be releasing, uh, that series in an easy to consume format on iTunes and a bunch of different platforms. So you can purchase it for a super low price and, and listen to it however you want, you know, um, uh, not to, to, you know, make it that, uh, me protesting too much, but you know, I, I 
I don't know how to give it away for free in an easily consumable format other than the ways that we have on Twitter and LinkedIn and, and the, you know, you can, you can go through and you can download all of them and, and, uh, and listen to them in that way. Um, but, uh, but this isn't about making money, you know, this is about, uh, getting the information to you and is whatever way that works. Um, and, uh, and, and one of the ways that we're thinking to do it is we're putting out a spoken word album, uh, based on that series. I'm also going to be, uh, putting out at least two more books this year, you know, maybe more. Uh, one is going to be a compilation of blog posts from 2017, uh, to go as a companion with the ebook that I already have out. Uh, and the other is a, a book that I've been working on. It's a short book that's going to help bridge the gap in understanding about veteran mental health, both in the mental health community and the veteran community. You know, I see that book as, um, as, as sort of something that uh, my colleagues in the mental health profession um, just understand a little bit more uh, about veterans. Um, and then uh, and for the veterans to understand a little bit more about uh, mental health. Um, you know, about uh, how it can benefit them and how it can support them. Uh, I do have a, a BHAG this year, a big, hairy, audacious goal, uh, and that's to uh, publish a book based on the Veteran Mental Health Boot Camp series. It's actually something that, uh, that I've been working on, um, that uh, I, I have um, uh, created a, a book proposal, um, which was uh, basically the basis of that uh, uh, that episode, that series of episodes, uh, and it's going to be covering each of the different aspects that I talked about there. Uh, you know, I don't do New Year's resolutions, uh, but there are some goals uh, for me. And and looking back in 2018, we can uh, we can keep score on 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 what I did. Um, uh, maybe you can all be my accountability partners. Uh, but two, maybe three books, a spoken word album. Uh, you know, maybe even a webinar or two. So thanks for listening. If you made it this far, uh, I'd love to hear from you. Seriously, I would love to hear from you. We would love to hear from you. Uh, as as I wrote about in that uh, that blog post, there's those those moments of doubt um, of uh, you know, are we doing something? Is it is it effective? Is it making a difference? You know, sometimes this can be like shouting in the fog. You know, we don't know if anyone's listening, but your feedback literally does help us realize that hey, people are listening. Uh, so head over to iTunes or the Google Play Store and drop a review on the podcast. Uh, send us a message at changeyourpov.com or veteranmentalhealth.com. Tweet at me on Twitter, um, at the counseling vet, TH counseling vet. Um, find my name, you know, just uh, do a quick search, Dwayne France, spell it the right way, D-U-A-N-E. Um, but, uh, but reach out, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn, LinkedIn. Uh, reach out to me on Facebook. Let us uh, let us on the Change Your POV podcast network that uh, know that you you hear us and that uh, that what we're doing is is something that's uh, helping you and 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 helping you understand more about transition post military life. That means so much more than you might know. So have a peaceful and prosperous New Year, and remember, veterans, you're not alone, ever. The struggle is real, found a piece and lost a soul Eventually my drinking, it got out of control There in darkness I roam, struggling to find home See suddenly death didn't feel so alone 22 a day, destination unknown It could have been avoided if you picked up the phone But now you're gone, so I guess all we get is the tone Nothing but bone weeds, overgrown, pushing up stones I've triumphed over enemies, co-created enemies Broke out facilities that tried to put an end to me R.I.P., I'd rather grind in tranquility Authentic tendency, embrace my ability so there you have it, folks. Another episode of Headspace and Timing, a show dedicated to changing your perspective on veteran mental health. I'd like to thank Doc Todd for giving us permission to use the track Not Alone from his amazing album, Combat Medicine. Doc's a guy who's trying to bring the discussions about veteran mental health out of the darkness and into the light, and you need to check him out. Head over to therealdoctodd.com to purchase the album and support the cause. You're not alone, veterans. Ever. The struggle is real, found a piece and lost a soul Eventually my drinking, it got out of control There in darkness I roam, struggling to find home See suddenly death didn't feel so alone 22 a day, destination unknown It could have been avoided if you picked up the phone But now you're gone, so I guess all we get is the tone Nothing but bone weeds, overgrown, pushing up stones I've triumphed over enemies, co-created enemies Broke out facilities that tried to put an end to me R.I.P., I'd rather grind in tranquility Authentic tendency, embrace my ability
sin, gave every shred, every last thread of my identity, conquer my fragility, eliminate the enemy, deliver me, God, from temptation. Tell me that this life is just a matrix, need a facelift, back to basics, vision LASIKs, I only feel alive when I hear the bass kick. Take those bottles out, dog, and pour them in the sink. Take the needles out your arm and the gun away from your forehead. It's time, man. You've been through enough pain. Stand up. It's time to stand back up. All my veterans, man. Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard. Get up. You know. You know.